We're back for more about the intermediate value theorem. I introduced it by talking about the idea of determining whether there's a solution to an equation and without being able to actually use algebra to solve that equation. And um, there's, there's other uses for the, uh, for the intermediate value theorem, other places where it comes up. Um, and I talked a little bit about teleporting cars and things like that um, to get the idea of why it's true. But let's go back to this problem. ln x equals x e to the minus x. If you graph it on the calculator, the calculator gives you a lot po of points, and it makes it fairly clear that, yeah, it looks like there's some magic number where these cross. But I pointed out that you're really assuming something there, that there's not some little gap where they just hop across each other. And in fact, the, the calculator is only f calculating some finite number of pixels for each of the curves. And unless you had some sort of understanding of what's really going on with the curves, you might imagine that, yeah, maybe they do cross, just jump across each other. But the intermediate value theorem actually is going to guarantee that they must cross. And it gives us at least a little bit of a notion of where they do cross. And you don't even have to be staring at a, a good graph of that to do that. So let's, let's redraw that a little bit with the minimum of information. So we're trying to solve that equation. We're going to call that f of x, and we're going to call that g of x. And so we want to know when those two things are equal. And we're going to observe the crucial part of that seem to be that f of 0, I'm just going to make a list of the data, f of, oh, sorry, f of 1 is equal to 0, ln of 1 is equal to 0. And uh, f of 2 was equal to, it's about 0.69. And so that's going up, I guess I had that in blue before. So here's a blue point, and here's another blue point. And let's say 1 is way up here. And now what about x e to the minus x? That's g. G of 1 is equal to 1 times e to the minus 1, or 1 over e, or about 0 0.37. And g of 2 equals 2 e to the minus 2, which is, I should have calculated that, but that's about, um, let's say it's about 0 0.3, very roughly. And so that, that guy's going down from a little more than a third to maybe less than a third as we go. Can you see the colors? Not so well, but it's okay. Okay. And we want to know we, why we can conclude from the intermediate value theorem. How could we write it down carefully? The intuition that if the blue's going up and the red's going down, they must cross. Okay. And so we're trying to sort of fill in the blanks here. That's blue. That's red. And must there be a crossing there? Well, let's write down exactly what the intermediate value theorem says, and then figure out how it can be extended a little bit to cover this case. Let me go with blue. I think it's better. So IVT. I'm going to use uh, another letter, because I don't want to confuse with F and G here. I'm going to say, here's what it says. Suppose that H is continuous. If it's not continuous, it's totally not going to apply here. Suppose h is continuous on a finite closed interval a to b. I'll draw the picture here, a, b. And um, what was the letter that the book used? n. And n is lying between Oh, actually, let's see. And um, n is between h of a and h of b. I'm not going to write an in it. Well, I'm going to write an in equal. There's two possibilities. Either h of a is less than n, less than or equal to n, less than or equal to h of b, or 
h of b less than or equal to n less than or equal to h of a. It could either be going up through that level or down through that level. Let's imagine we have this situation. There's the graph of h, and here's this number n, which we're putting in as a y value. And we're saying, if you give me some y value that's between f of a and f of b, then it's got to cross that, unless it jumps, or has blow up, or some other discontinuity, or has a little gap in it. But if it doesn't, which means, i.e., it's continuous, it doesn't have that. Well, what's different about this situation is we've got two functions that are supposed to cross each other, not one function that's supposed to cross a constant. But there's a very common technique we have that allow, allows us to take a two-function problem and, and turn it into a one-function problem. The key is that h of x, if we look at the difference between these things, we start out with these f and g, and we keep track of the difference in height between them. And the difference of height is going to be 0 exactly when they're equal. And so it's that new function, the difference of height is the difference between the f and g. The difference in the heights. Okay, then we just have to ask, is h continuous? So will this theorem apply? Well, h of x is the difference of two continuous functions. We have a big, this big laundry list theorem that says that as long as we stay away from places where the, that are not in the domain, like negative numbers are zero for ln, um, then this is going to be continuous. Check. Okay. And then we just have to see, can, is this in this form where I've got a continuous function going from one value to another, and can we make it cross a specified value? Well, here n is going to be zero, because we're interested in where these functions are going to be equal. So for us, n equals 0. And how, does that, how are we going to make things work? This is going to work for n equals 0 exactly when f of a is negative and f of b is positive, or vice versa, as long as there's a sign change. Okay. So this is a common special case, but not the only case, but certainly a very common case. If you have a sign change in a continuous function, then you must have a zero in between the two points where you know the sign changes. If there's a sign change on some interval, there must be a zero in that interval. And the book talks about how important that is. Okay, so now finally, we're, we're ready to do our, our problem because, let me just go back to here. We're just going to calculate h of 1 is f of 1 minus g of 1. That's about, uh, it's minus 1 over e. That's definitely less than 0. h of 2 is f of 2 minus g of 2. To be really precise, that's ln 2 minus 2 to the minus 2, and it's easy to calculate that that is greater than 0. And so when we graph h, that's going to go from 1 to 2, it's going to go from the negative number up to a positive number. Okay, so there is some c in 1, 2 with h of c equals 0. And what do we know? h of c equals 0, that's the same thing as saying that f of c equals, equals g of c. And we've shown that there must be some mystery C where these two things cross. This is a very powerful method um, because we could not solve this. We don't know what the C is using algebra, but we've shown it must exist. And your problems for tonight are, um, are basically of this form. You need to, f to find you need to come up often with these numbers, like the 1 and 2 here. They're not necessarily given to you, but you need to come up with those. Find a sign change or find a, a crossing and use the invariant value theorem to show what you need. Try it out.